let's talk a little bit about uh, you uh, run peyote ceremonies there on your property out in Utah, and people can contact you to become a member of your church. What would someone want to do? What would they need to do? Well, what you're asking is a very, um, it's a simple answer to what you're asking. If you happen, if I'm a federally recognized Indian, okay, I have a reservation card. That's given to me. So if I have peyote or my sacrament on me and I'm stopped some highway and they uh, realize that I have peyote in the car, if I don't have a tribal card, I go to jail. It's a felony. Okay. So Aklava Native American Church, as we're standing here right now, is the only Native American church practicing outside of reservations that qualify for the same exceptions. Okay, and so in order to protect the partakers of our sacraments, we supply a card for them, and that's how we do that. That way, they are protected when they're doing our ceremonies, so that somebody says these people are taking peyote, and we want you to fire them because we have a no drug uh, policy. Okay, if that person has a card, he shows that to them. It's uh, then he's protected under the First Amendment. Which is religious freedom. Yes, exactly right. Okay, so what mm -hmm. is the name, what is your website once again? It's uh, www.nativeamericanchurch.net. Okay. It's Aklava Native American Church. Aklava means unstoppable river. Mm. It's seminal. That's wow. what that word. And our tribe still resides on the Aklava River in Orange Springs, Florida. Joining the, the, the church and contributing well, what the, the uh, okay, the the one of the the monies that are being contributed to Aklava Native American Church are used to build up uh, habilitative programs, Aklava Native American Church habilitative programs, and this way we'll be able to heal the ailment of the public that has tremendous. Um, emotional problems and challenges right now for a variety of reasons, whether it's addictive, addictive behaviors or uh, inappropriate uh, parents that have uh, molested their children. Uh, our, our ceremonies have proven to heal that. Uh, om we have almost a successful ratio of more than 85 percent and it's pushing 90 percent as a matter Getting of fact. Getting people off of uh, dangerous narcotics like crystal or, methane, crystal uh, Well that too, you know, but it's, but uh, the ceremony is not only, uh, we're not focused on drugs, we're focused on, on people that have severe damage uh, that has gone on with them. Psyche, They're psychic, uh, you, you, what you would go to a psychiatrist for. Uh, we have ceremonies that will cure darn near anything. And whether for myself it was bipolar manic depressive. I didn't have a substance abuse problem, but man, I was goofy as all get out, taking 1,800 milligrams of lithium a day. And then after uh, a particular medicine man worked with me with peyote, his name was Clifford White Buffalo Man Jake, Paiute, a uh, ban uh, Bannock Paiute, a road man of the Native American church, all of a sudden now. I haven't had lithium for over 25 years. And so it's, it's a healing. The ceremonies, the Native American ceremonies are healing. Live from Salt Lake City, Utah, this is Fox 13 News at 9. Last month, a Native American church got back what the state of Utah took from it eight years ago. Today, church members held a ceremony to celebrate the return of the, their peyote chief, a plant, and a powerful hallucinogen. Fox 13's Katie Carlisle has that story. I'm one of the chief that have um, stand for what our freedom was given. And that freedom is our religion. A Native American tradition continues despite the state of Utah's best efforts. Historically, the government has only stepped in to squash our beliefs. In 2000, James Warren Flaming Eagle Mooney was arrested for using peyote in religious ceremonies. Prosecutors filed charges against him and the Aklava Native American Church. It's uh, one of the oldest 
I guess you would say, of sacraments that, that our people know. That sacrament has been responsible for literally thousands of people to overcome uh, drug addictions, alcoholism. The Utah Supreme Court ruled in favor of the church, saying members could use peyote. And when federal prosecutors began to pursue action, the Utah Federal Defender's Office came to the church's aid. No charges were ever filed. This ceremony was meant to honor those defenders. Their appreciation, that's what they're going to give here. The Defender's Office also helped the church get back this plant the church calls the peyote chief. They actually came during a crisis to protect our spirituality. Church leaders say the peyote chief presides over their religious ceremonies and they had to get a new one after this was confiscated back in 2000. Authorities let it dry out, which church leaders consider sacrilegious. Okay, my cute copy is in the church. But church members say the dried peyote plant still maintains its power and therefore its place in their religious ceremonies. Our um, way of worship, our way of our singing and the language, every one of these we use to praise the Almighty God. Katie Carlisle, Fox 13 News, Utah. What is your name? My name is James Warren Flaming Eagle Mooney. What is your organization? Aklava Native American Church. What is the Aklava Native American Church? It is the only Native American church recognized by the United States government that can worship and honor the indigenous ceremonies, earth-based healing ceremonies of North and South America. And so what does that mean? You have recently won some important legal precedent for your church, is that correct? That's true. And can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, the, uh, the state of Utah attempted to outlaw the Native American church in the state of Utah. And it went all the way to the United uh, to the Utah Supreme Court, and the Utah Supreme Court basically unanimously, not basically, but unanimously ruled in the favor that you cannot uh, destroy a, a, a church, let alone the Native American church, the original religious uh, concepts of this nation. And so, you in your practice with your Native American church. You use uh, healing herbs. Oh, yeah. all all plants of of the earth are considered sacred to us. And therefore, uh, people focus mostly on peyote because it, well, in my opinion, is the premier uh, healing element uh, utilized spiritually healing element utilized by indigenous people through uh, North and South America for thousands of years, and we can uh, do that uh, uh, legally with an exception to the law for the Native American culture to be able to worship its spirituality. And that would also include other healing herbs such as marijuana, ayahuasca? As far as I'm concerned, yeah, absolutely. And I worked on uh, with the law enforcement for quite some years, and, and my understanding of the law is I'm not an attorney, but, um, but uh, court cases are now just saying, hey, hey. We can't prosecute these people if they belong to Aqua the Native American Church because it's a bona fide uh, Native American church and they have constitutional rights like everybody else does. And so they can practice their sacrament, which is peyote and uh, uh, marijuana? Pedro, ayahuasca, any herb that is manufactured, not manufactured, but just picked from... Uh, from Mother Earth is, is is our sacrament. And so, not only do you does is your church for Native Americans, but it is also for you. Also invite other people to belong to your church. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I mean, how do you how do you dictate spirituality by race? For goodness sakes, I mean that's idiotic. In the United States, the because of the Bureau of Indian Affairs and people that support the Bureau of Indian Affairs uh, have a political affiliation with all of the uh, uh, federally recognized tribes. And uh, the Bureau of Indian Affairs over and time and over tried to outlaw our culture, which is the indigenous uh, culture of this land, and they failed. Uh, they tried to kill it off, they killed off the medicine people, whether you want to talk about Osseo in the 1800s and early 1800s or a crazy horse and sitting bull, 
they, they would not capitulate, and yet our ceremonies are still here. And so now you offer the ability for anyone to belong to your church. That's Is that right. correct? It's a spiritual introduction. Uh, uh, admittance into our church, uh, you know, it, it's really, first of all, we believe we're all one anyway. And so everybody's a member already. You know? Okay. And uh, uh, and there's different traditions. Uh, I adhere to the tradition. Once you sit around the circle with me in a fire, you're a member of my church, period. Okay? I don't need a card. I mean, what religion uh, has uh, uh, a... Um, uh, what religion has a requirement to have a flipping card in order to signify you're a member of it? I mean, come on. This doesn't happen. However... The Native American church does, because we have this exception to the laws of the land. And so in order for a person to validate themselves uh, to a law enforcement officer or to a court or whatnot, that they have the constitutional rights under the Native American church to be able to partake of these sacraments. And so we have to provide, and we do, provide and also have a documentation so if any law enforcement agency wants to ask us uh, is this person a member we can tell them, can say exactly when he was, why he was etc. And so if belonging to the church not only gives you the benefit of belonging to the church and participating in the ceremony but you can practice your own ceremonial beliefs with your own plants at your own time whenever you want to uh, without fear of being Incarcerated under the prohibitionary type tactics of our of our government. That's exactly. That's basically right. In other words, the Native American Church is making a stand and just saying uh, the war on drugs is is, is obnoxious. And it's over. It, it, it's over. The war on drugs is now is over. It's over. Uh, the only thing that's standing in the way of having people experiences is people don't know. And it's like, uh, uh, I think about World War II and these people that were on, I forgot what, Guam. They were on Guam. And uh, 50 year, 40 years later, there were Japanese soldiers in the jungles still thinking the war, World War II was on. Okay? And that's what uh, 80% of the public right now uh, is under the, the cloud that there's still a war going on. It's over. Okay, it's proven unequivocally that people, uh, when you have law enforcement agencies breaking down people's doors because they have some, a stash of whatever controlled substances they may be looking for, they're illegal, not the people that are partaking of something of their own free will. Okay, and so how would people contact you to become part of your it's church? And uh, Aklava, or, or uh, it's www.nativeamericanchurch.com. Dot net. And then, and then they can also Google your name, mm -hmm. James, yeah. James Moon. James Flaming Eagle Moon. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is the court case? Could you give us a, what was uh, the name of the well, court case? There's actually numerous of court cases. Okay. okay. Oh, three of them. A higher court. The first one would be the Boyle versus United States, which was in, uh, ruled on about 1990 unanimously again by the um, uh, first by the. Um, uh, Federal Court of New Mexico, and then it was appealed to the Tenth Circuit Court, and is scathing for anybody, any law enforcement agency thinking they can dictate spirituality by race, for goodness sakes, and political affiliation. Because what uh, the Bureau of Indian Affairs wants, and the people that influence it, they want. Uh, to kill the, the Native American uh, tradition simply by saying only Native American people can do that. I mean, that's just crazy. Okay, and then what's the second case? Second case is um, um, uh, uh, State of Utah versus um, James and Linda Mooney and Auckland the Native American Church. And that that ruling was saying again uh, uh, that uh, Native American Church has no rights to uh, give uh, its sacraments to a non-federally recognized Indian. And the Utah Supreme Court ruled unanimously against that. And then the last case, that was 1994. And then in 1996, there was a case utilizing the Indian uh, Religious Freedom Act 
uh, as its uh, reasons to be able, since we can use POD and etc. This was the ayahuasca church. So, and that law is UDV versus United States. It went all the way to the United States Supreme Court where it won unanimously again. That you cannot dictate religious practices by uh, racial uh, uh, means, nor does it just apply to peyote. It applies to all plants. In this case, it's ayahuasca, which is a combination of two plants. And did you also have one of your members, uh, James Gardner, uh, he also defeated a uh, dr- uh, marijuana charge. Jeffrey Gardner? Yeah, Jeff Gardner. I mean. Yes, in, in a court of law. And we have also the Oklahoma Native American Church of Hawaii filed a civil uh, or a, uh, a complaint against the United States because they confiscated quite a bit of pay, uh, 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 cannabis, which was the uh, uh, Oklahoma Native American Church of Hawaii's um, sacrament that they utilized. And they filed an injunction on the United States as soon as they confiscated the um, marijuana out of the United States mails. Okay? Now, uh, when that injunction was filed, it was saying you cannot um, do this or you got to stop this activity. Well, the uh, federal judge uh, ended up dismissing the case with the promise of the United States that they're not going to violate Akaba Native American Church of Hawaii's constitutional rights by taking their cannabis out of the mail or they're not going to arrest anybody. Okay, and that's in a court ruling. That is a court ruling. And so the uh, uh, judge dropped the injunction because the state of the United States says there's no reason to have an injunction because we no, have no intentions of arresting them or taking any more of their cannabis out of the mail. That's a big case. That's a federal case. Okay? Okay. Thank you very much, James.